breadth is look at simply how many stocks are making new highs and how many stocks are making new lows. So here we're looking at the time period from 2018 through 2020. We saw two pretty volatile time period times during that uh, two major corrections during those, those basically three year period where we had the market drop roughly 20%. Um, it was a little less than that on a closing basis in the US markets in 2018. But notice how we saw the peak in new 52 week highs was back in January, February of that year of 2018. And then we saw significantly less new highs. Maybe you can see clearly by that pretty, pretty uh, black arrow going down. We saw a lot less new highs towards the third and fourth quarter of 2018. And that tells us that there wasn't a lot of bullish participation by individual stocks. Then we can look at the kind of the opposite of that. When we start seeing less stocks making new 52 week lows. If we look to the far right side of this chart with the very bottom panel, we have the percent of the S&P that's making a new 52 week low. And in fact, we saw that peak, the, the largest number of 52 week lows occur before the market bottomed. By the time the S&P actually hit its low, we, we were seeing less stocks making 52 week lows, telling us that stocks had begun to recover ahead of the actual index. When the index is making lower lows, we saw um, still a significant level, but we went from about almost 70% of stocks at 52 week lows to just a little over 40%. You can see the price low on that with the arrow there on the far right side. So we were seeing internally that strength that the market was starting to improve. Again, looking at the same chart, but now we're looking at different look back periods. So again, at the very top, we have new 52 week lows, six month lows, three month lows, 20, 20 day lows just looking at different periods of time to, to see is the market strengthening or weakening. So during that COVID crash period in 2020, while the market was going lower, we were actually, again, across different look back periods, seeing less stocks going down. That's, that's what market bulls, that's what buyers wanna see, that we're seeing that stocks weren't showing the same level of weakness, the same level of bearishness that the overall market, the overall indice was showing telling us that potentially, when we want to start looking at other data as well, of course, but potentially maybe we are getting near a bottom or at least a tradable low in the market. And as obviously looking back, we know that's exactly what happened. The market put in its, its low in March and then began to rip higher. And to the point where, as you can see, we had no stocks essentially making new lows after we bottomed in March. All the stocks began to show extreme strength and we didn't have just this slow improvement. It was almost a complete reversal in market trend where stocks really began to, to go higher um, following that, that market kind of crash period in February and March of 2020. And we gave, got early insight because we were looking at market breadth. We were looking at the individual stock participation began to dwindle on the downside. Again, continuing to look at new highs, looking at six month highs. So narrowing our focus beyond just 52 week highs in this, this current downtrend we have. So back in the, at the end of last year and the start of this year, every time the market began to dip, we can see that we are getting a little bit more, a little bit more of six month lows. You look at the bottom part of that chart. Every minor decline, we started seeing an expansion of selling. We started seeing more stocks hitting six month lows, even though the market was marginally off its high. That was telling us that the market internals were beginning to deteriorate. We had less stocks rallying higher. And we can actually, this is what I do with, with my Thresh Analytics letter, is try to quantify that data and say, okay, what are similar periods in time to where when the S&P begins to weaken, simply just crosses below its 20-day average, just as starting to turn lower, what do the internals look like? So with the study that I ran, and I published this actually in, in real time back in um, early at the start of this year, when we first saw this happen, and ended up being the market peak, was when the market began to turn lower, again, cross below its 20-day average, and we actually had more than 5% of the underlying stocks hitting six-month lows, what's the market done in previous instances? And what we can see here is we saw that happen actually before the COVID crash. We saw that happen before the market turned lower in 2018. We saw it happen before the market turned lower in 2015. We saw it happen before the market peaked before the financial crisis. And we also saw it roughly six months to a year actually before the market peaked during the dot-com dot bubble. 
by telling us that we're seeing a lot of deterioration, a lot of stocks are starting to turn lower. And again, we don't need a lot. This is just looking at 5%. The fact that we had already had 5% of the market at a six month low, when the market was just starting to show some weakness, tells us that there's already been this buildup of selling, this buildup of weakness, and the market's just now starting to recognize it. And so this is what I was writing about in January and February, that we're already seeing a lot of weakness in the market. The indices just hadn't recognized it yet. And then we eventually, obviously, then saw the markets collapse by uh, 20, 20 plus percent going on from there. But this gave us an early look that just looking for 5% deterioration by losing market breadth, it can be an extremely useful tool.